In session four of this quick start video series, we're going to work with the customer records again and we're going to create estimates, contracts, jobs, work orders, and invoices for an existing customer that we set up an appointment for in session three. Okay, so to get started, we're going to be looking at the customer and I have the customer's record here in front of me from the last session's video and we're going to create an estimate for this customer. So to do so, we're going to go down into the Estimates Related tab of the customer, and we're going to click Add New Record. When the estimate pulls up in front of us, the screen allows us to do a number of different things, and we have to fill out a bunch of pieces of required information. They are all noted again with the stars, as we've seen in many of the other data modules. So we'll start out with an estimate date, and we'll put in today's date for the estimate date, and then we'll choose who the person is that is selling this job, and it's salesman in this case, and the job type is a roof job. Now these lists obviously come from the job type pick list, the employees pick list. We also have payment terms, and we'll say that the payment terms are net 30, and the job status, the estimate status, will be created. Now we can also put a projected start and end date for the job here. So I'm going to say that if everything goes well, we'll start this job on the 29th and we'll hope to have it finished by the 31st. Okay, that takes care of the top level data that needs to be added to the estimate. In addition, we also have to have a job site address. So we know the customer because we pulled the estimate up from the customer's record, but we don't have a job site address yet. So if the customer's address is the same, as the job site address, we can just use the copy button to automatically fill the fields on the right hand side with the data from, from the customer's address. So those will all be filled in at that point. So now we have our top level information for this particular customer's estimate. So now I can save this just to, to show you that it will be updated in the customer's record and they will have an estimate number assigned. So now we actually have an estimate number sitting here in the customer's estimates. It's estimate number seven. So let's go back into the estimate and let's add some items to the estimate and some other data as well. So let's go, so let's open the customer estimate and add some roof sections and items and descriptions and all of the rest of the estimate that we'll build to build the contract for the customer. Okay, let's start out with roof sections. Roof sections are the individual measurements of the roof itself so that you can come up with a total number of square feet that need to be uh, have roofing applied. So the roof section manager here allows us to right click and add different section shapes for the roof. And I'm going to add a rectangle section shape to represent the main roof of the home. And that'll be the name. I'll also copy that and paste it down into the description as well. Uh, now, the section shape has a certain set of measurements. It has a width and a height, okay? So we're gonna enter in the input number one, we're gonna enter the height. And the height is going to be 16 feet, and the length is going to be 32 feet. Now that's going to represent one main side of a roof for the house, and we actually have two of those. So, I'm going to say that there are two 16 by 32 sections of roof decking for the main house. And then I'm going to say that this is a plain gable roof and that's going to give me a 10% waste factor. So it calculates the waste automatically at 1.024 and it calculates the squares or per 100 square feet at 11.264. So it automatically calculates that for me and I'll save this section. Now I've got my main roof section here, I'm going to add an additional rectangle section and this one is going to be for the garage and the garage has a 12 foot rafter and it's 24 feet long and there will be two of those. I'll also have that be a plain gable roof and I'll save that section. As you'll see we have the main roof in the garage now and the total for the house at this point is 17.6 squares. I'll actually add one more section and that'll be the farmer's porch. And the farmer's porch, I will have an eight foot rafter going the entire 32 length at the front of the house. And there's just one of those on the farmer's porch. Um, again, that's a gable, so 10% waste and save. And there should be another couple squares added to 
the estimate. Okay, so our total for each of these three sections is 20.42 squares. And you can drill into each of these to see a little bit more information about them, the length, width, and quantity, and description. You can do that for any of them. So now we know that our roof is going to have 20.42 squares. So we're going to need 2,100 square feet of shingles. So at this point, I think it's time to go in and add estimate items. So let's go ahead into the estimate items area. And let's go ahead and add a new item. Okay, the product selector pops up when we want to add a new item. And it works from the top down here. We have... On the left hand side we have the product categories in the system. On the right hand side we have all of the suppliers and then in the middle we have the matching products for the given or selected categories and suppliers. So right now all product categories are selected and all suppliers are selected yielding us every single product in the system. So we can narrow this down a bit. The first thing we'll add to this estimate is some shingles. So I'm going to choose the shingles product category and now I'm getting all shingles for all suppliers. But if I choose to, I can just look at ABC Shingle Supply and I'll see the two sets of shingles that we have from ABC Shingle Supply. You may recall we added those back in an earlier uh, training session. Okay, so we're going to choose the 30-year architectural shingles and we just click on that in the center and that brings that item down into down into the main area for the item details. And this actually has a $5 cost for material, $2 for labor, nothing for equipment, and that makes the unit cost $7. The profit margin is 20. So these carry over from the unit item setup. So it's $8.40 per square foot. And we're going to use the length, width, and additional square feet inputs because this is a square foot measurement. And since I, I know that there are 2,142 2, square feet, what I'm going to do is put in zero for the length, zero for the width, and I'm just going to put in an additional square foot number of 2,100. That means that I can just have this one line item with 2,100 square feet and they are $840 a piece, so that's $17,640. So I can save that, and that takes care of my shingles for the roof. I'll add another item for the gutters. So I'm going to go to the gutter. I'm going to choose gutters. I'm going to choose XYZ Gutter House, and that gives me just one item, and that's per linear foot, $9.60. So that will be 6 two and the profit is 20 percent so I know that for linear feet I don't have length and width identifiers instead I just modify the quantity directly and I need hundred and twelve feet linear feet worth of gutters so that calculates out to one thousand seventy five dollars and twenty cents and finally I'll add my third product which is the ice and water shield Okay, so for the ice and water shield, I'll choose that category again. Here's the per roll, and that's uh, $200, $50 installation. And again, I can override these if I want to. If I had to rent some equipment that was going to cost me $45 for this job, I could put that in right there, and it would be calculated into the cost. I'm not going to do that, but I could. I can also, again, override the unit price. If I wanted to give a discount here, I could sell this for $225 if I wanted to adjust the price but I'm not going to do that. So this will be a $300 uh, for the roll and we'll actually need two rolls of this. Okay, so that's $600. So now I can save out my product selector. And now I have all three items that are going to be necessary to do this roof job. So I'm gonna go on to the additional pieces of information that are printed in the customer's uh, contract. In the job description, I'm going to actually put a little bit of details as to what we're going to do. We're going to remove existing roofing and take away. We're going to install ice and water over first the all roofs. And then we're going to install 30-year 
architectural shingles. And then we're going to install gutters on house, garage, and farmer's porch. Okay, so that's the job description. You can pop this up into a bigger window so that you can see here, and you can put as much detail in here as you want. Understand that when you print your job work order for your installers, you, this is what they're going to see on their work order, so you want to be as detailed and descriptive as you can here, and it's also going to be printed on the customer contract, so they'll be able to see what the job entails. So you may put more detail into this particular section than I just did. We also have job images. Here's the house as it was uploaded in the customer section when the installers went and did the measurement. They gave it back to us and we uploaded it to the record. Then we have the estimate terms and conditions. And the estimate terms and conditions are pre-populated. In this case, I can see them. I'll pop up the magnifier again. They're pre-populated with what's in the company data. If you decide specifically for this job you want to change something, you can. I'm not going to do that, but you can. Uh, we also have the payment schedule area. So I'll pop this up. Now the payment schedule, I'm going to say this is going to be one, one third down payment, one third when job is completed, one third due in 30 days. Now you can put whatever you want for a level of detail in your payment arrangement. This is going to print on the contract for the customer. I've just put a little bit of something in there so we'll see it. And then we are ready to save the estimate. So now the estimate is complete at this point. So let's go ahead and look at some of the documents that you can print out and give to your customers. So I'm going to bring it, I've got the estimate here in front of me. I'm going to print and that will bring me to a screen that allows me to choose from a number of documents for the estimate. I've got what are known as a standard and a detailed contract. And they're both very similar documents. It's just a small difference that we'll discuss in a second. So I'll pull up the standard contract so you can see it. And this is a pre-formatted document. Your information shows up in the top left. There's some information about the estimate number, the date, and phone number. And it's a customer proposal. So we have the customer's name and address. And then we have all of the products that are associated with the estimate and the quantities, a subtotal, tax, shipping, and grand total and we have the payment terms that were selected for the estimate as well. Now the difference between a standard and a detailed contract is only in this first page. So this is a standard contract. Notice that it goes product description and quantity. If you choose a detailed contract, that changes to also include unit price shipping and tax and an extended price per line item. Uh, sometimes insurance quotes require a little more detail in them and a detailed contract would be useful in those scenarios. So that's the first page of the contract. The second page starts with the job description, and here's what I had typed in, if you'll recall. And then we have the total project cost. We have the payment schedule that I had typed in. And then down below there, we have the acceptance terms that come from your company data right here, our signature or your company signature, and the customer's company signature. So this is the contract. And then on the next page, we have any customer specific photos that have been taken. So there was one, if you recall. The next page has product specific photos. And since all of our products actually had photos, they're all included here so that the customer can see those. And then we have the estimate terms and conditions finally. So that is a contract. And what I will do is I'll put this to PDF and I'll export it. Now what that's going to do is give me a PDF file that I can then uh, I can then actually save to my hard drive and I'll, and I'll actually send it to the customer via email. So I'm going to send it. Let's see. Let me just. It's estimate number seven. I'll save it to the hard drive. So now I have that estimate. I'm going to come back here and close this out. Close this out. So now I'm going to go back to the customer's record. I'm going to go to letters and I'm going to add a new record and it will be from a template down here for proposal acceptance. And I'm going to modify this a bit to say attached, please find our proposal to replace your roof. And so now I've got the, um, the text there. I'm going to come down into the attachment section. I'm going to go to the hard drive and I'm going to find estimate number seven. I'll rename that. I spelled it wrong. Estimate number seven. And I'm going to add that attachment.
Now once I do that, the document will upload, as you'll see here. And then it will be attached actually to the document. So I'll go ahead and send the email. Now the email has been sent. It's got a letter ID, so I'll go ahead and save. And under my letters, I now have two letters for the customer. One for the appointment confirmation we did in the prior session, and then this one including the estimate attachment that we just did. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is look at the estimate because the customer has had a chance to review it and they've decided to accept our, our proposal. So now that they've accepted it, we're going to convert this estimate to a job. And to do that, you come over to this side menu here and you hit the Convert to Job button. That will take this estimate and all of its details and convert it into a job. So I'll click that button and now get the message that the estimate has been converted to a job so I'll hit OK. So now that that's happened I can close out the estimate and back at the customer record I can refresh and I've now got a job and I've got job number four. So let's go ahead and look at the job. So now I've got the job in front of me it looks the same the job screen looks nearly identical to the estimate screen. Um, basically the same fields it's just that for estimates and jobs we have a different status tracking here the job is not started um, it can be in progress or completed. So you track that along the way as well and you'll be able to use that in your reporting to know where the statuses are of your jobs. Okay, so we also have um, some additional information here. We have a miscellaneous expenses area where I can actually add expenses to this job to track them separately that were unanticipated expenses during the job. So for instance, I can add a new record to the miscellaneous expenses and I could choose an expense type here of food and then I'll just say lunch for the crew and the expense date let's just say will be the 29th and we'll put in one and the receipt amount was fifty five dollars and fifty eight cents so the total expense will be fifty five fifty eight and I'll save it now I've got that expense also attached to this job okay so the next thing I want to do is print some documents from the job. So I'll hit the print button on the job. That will bring up the set of documents we can print for this job. So we've got a work order that would go out for our um, that would go out for our installation crew. So let's have a look at that. The work order basically has our information on the top of it, the job number, the date, customer's phone number, their address, and then it's got a description for what to do for the installers. So this is the description that I had typed in, you'll recall on the estimate, tells them what to do. Again, you'll probably want to be more detailed than I was there, but that is uh, what I typed in, so that's what showed up in the job description. So that's the work order. And then we also have for a customer, we have an invoice. So the invoice basically just sums up everything with all of the grand totals of everything. It's a, again a printed formatted document, your logo and address, the invoice number, the date, customer's phone number and their uh, address and then all the products, payment terms, payment schedule and the grand total. Okay, so that covers uh, customers, estimates, work orders, contracts, jobs and invoices. And that concludes our quick start video series for the Roofing Estimator Pro version 2.0.